everyone and welcome inside the Bob Devaney Sports Center where today a top 10 showdown between Big Ten foes. It's the Nebraska Cornhuskers taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Hello everyone, I'm your host Jeff Ekstrom. Welcome to my color commentator today, Drew Kassler. And Drew, it's a big one today, plenty of great matchups, but first we got to start at 197 pounds. It's number 10 Eric Schultz against number one Colin Moore. Those guys have wrestled each other. This will be their fifth all-time meeting. Colin Moore winning all of them, but Eric Schultz could be a stickler today. Boy, he really can. Last time they met, 7-5 overtime win for Colin Moore. Um, you know, he's going to put that number one ranking on the line tonight. Eric Schultz coming off uh, three big wins in a row. Should be a great matchup. Look for it to be a close one. Uh, last meeting uh, was last year in Columbus, and uh, Schultz was pushed more all the way, a 7-5 win for more there. But also got to move uh, also to 174. That's where we'll be starting today. That's going to be against Mikey Labriola and Caleb Romero. Those two faced each other at the Cliff Keen invite, a 2-1 win for Labriola. It's going to be really close. It, it definitely is. Um, both of those guys enjoying great seasons. Labriola returning All-American. Caleb Romero, young, hungry, look for another close match there and across the board. This is going to be a great duel. Well, it's going to be an exciting one. It's a top 10 showdown. Nebraska, Ohio State, coming back after this. Hello, everyone, and welcome back inside the Bob Vanny Sports Center. Jeff Ekstrom along with Drew Kassler here as we begin this duel between number three, Ohio State, and number 11, Nebraska. And we're going to begin things at 174 pounds. It's going to be between Caleb Romero and Mikey Labriola. Labriola ranked number six, Romero ranked number seven. And Drew, as we begin things here, these two guys familiar with each other, uh, Labriola defeated Romero 2-1 to one at the Cliff Keen invite on his way to a third-place finish. Yeah, obviously a uh, razor-thin margin between these two, ranked number six and number seven. Um, probably going to come down to one takedown. It's going to be a good match. Labriola, both the red shirt sophomores. Labriola from Easton, Pennsylvania, while Romero is from Mechanicsburg, Ohio. These two going at it here. Record for Romero, 15-3 and three on the year, while Labriola is 14-5. and five. Both very solid records for both of these wrestlers here at 174 pounds a minute into the first period scoreless here as both guys try to feel each other out yeah it's pretty typical in the first period seeing you know two evenly matched opponents maybe take a little time to get a feel for things you can expect the action to ramp up a little bit here and again this one is going to be a big one in terms of how important this is to this duel uh, this one being a flip and this is one where if Nebraska wants to get the win at home today and try to get a statement win they're going to win matches like this yeah huge huge in conference duel you know Big Ten seating on the line in a lot of matches for the Big Ten tournament um, and, and yeah you, you said it man this is going to be a you know close match and, and huge for uh, you know, starting the duel off on the right foot. Minute 15 left here in this opening period between Mikey Labriola and Caleb Romero. Romero, th five and one in Big Ten duels, while Labriola is six and three in duels, two and two in the Big Ten. One minute to go here in this first period. Still 0 0 between two combatants. Ooh, almost a single leg shot there by Labriola. Doesn't go anywhere. Romero got out of the way. Our first action here at 174 pounds. Begin this duel today here in Lincoln. Both of these guys were highly recruited wrestlers coming out of high school. Same same high school class. Um, you know, Labriola maybe just top couple in the nation, and, and Romero wasn't far behind. Labriola was ranked fifth nationally. While Romero is ranked number 12 in the class of 2017. Romero, that included a number one ranking of 170 pounds. He was also the top pound for pound wrestler in Ohio, a four time Ohio State champion. As the final seconds tick away here in this opening period, we are tied at 0 0 between Romero. And Labriola and Drew, not much happening there. We did have a shot by Labriola, but really, as we mentioned before, both guys are trying to fill each other out. Not a ton of action, and, and you know, judging by their first match, um, won by Labriola by a two to one score. We may not see a ton of scoring here, and it, and it might just come down to one takedown. To begin things here in the second period, it's gonna be Romero on bottom. We do have a caution 
on Labriola. He will be on top to begin things. And we have now a caution on Romero back to back. Both guys antsy to get it going here to start this duel off. We finally get going. Again, these two faced each other at the Cliff Keen invite where Labriola got the close two to one win. A switch there and escape for Romero, one nothing. Romero takes the early lead here, and like you mentioned before, Drew, that could be big considering how low scoring their affair beforehand was. Yeah, let's see if one of these guys decides to kind of get a little more aggressive on their feet. We did see the single leg attempt from Labriola in the first period. Pretty good shot attempt. Just wasn't able to score. Romero, eight and three against ranked opponents this year, certainly has had plenty of worthy, worthy adversaries, while for Labriola, he is two and five against ranked opponents, certainly a record that he would like to flip around because if he wants to get uh, a top finish at the Big Ten Championships and get an All-American status at the NCAAs, he's got to beat guys like Romero in uh, flips like this. Yeah, the top of the 174 pound weight class is awfully crowded and there's a lot of capable wrestlers and uh, you know, like you mentioned, Romero, Boy, out of 17 matches, he, out of 18 matches, he's had 11 ranked opponents. That's that's something there. Still one nothing, Romero here with 38 seconds to go in this second period between the two redshirt sophomores. The Huskers in their not so usual white singlets today. Ohio State in their red. I real almost with the shot there. 15 seconds to go here. We still haven't seen anyone really get in deep on anything just yet. Looks like Romero went for a double leg there, but it doesn't go. Final seconds ticking away. And that will do it. End of the second period. Romero leads Labriola one to nothing. And Labriola will be on bottom. Riding time not a factor. Only 14 seconds in favor of Labriola. Labriola gets to his feet and slam back down to the mat by Romero. Nice re mat return by Romero. This can help build momentum. And we go. They go out of bounds, but it's an escape for Labriola and ties this thing up at one. Escape on the edge, one to one. Takedown going to win this thing, it looks like. Players on their feet, like you said, one takedown. This thing could, it could do it. Romero, nice single leg by Romero. Looking to get on deep on the single leg, looking to make the takedown here. Good Labriola defense by Labriola. Almost flipped around, but gets out of trouble. Both now in neutral position. A minute 20 to go here in this third period. Nice little exchange there between those two. Good shot attempt by Romero. Excellent defense by Labriola. Labriola tried to go for a single leg. Nothing going there. But now reattacks. Almost gets something. But Romero gets to his feet. Minute to go. Action picking up here in the third period. And they will go out of bounds. And they're going to reset neutral position. Good one here to begin things, 174 pounds. Tied to one, 50 seconds to go. There's a single leg there by Romero. Continues to drive. Labriola hanging by a thread. Hanging on to Romero's ankle. Again, excellent defense there on that shot attempt by Labriola, and he's going to look to try and turn this into two for himself. 15 seconds. Labriola trying to flip it. But Romero, awfully close to a takedown, but still nothing called. Edge. He'll look for that ankle to get two. He now Labriola trying to flip things. Two seconds. 
And the buzzer goes, and they, and they give it to Labriola. Last second win for the redshirt sophomore from Easton, Pennsylvania. And he is excited after that one. And Ohio State coaches are going to throw the challenge brick. They're going to challenge the takedown on the edge by Labriola. Quite an exchange there on the edge. And on, and you have to throw that break because again, this is a this was a flippy match. It, it, it might be the first match of the night, but it's definitely a pivotal one, and you know it was very close. And, and you can't blame the Ohio State coach. And just an impressive display there by Labriola because it looked like about 45 seconds left in the third period. Romero for sure looked like he was going to get a takedown. We'll see if he's able to get that ankle on the edge. It looks like right there they may have two while he was on his butt and he had the ankle. And I don't, it certainly looks like it. But again, it's gonna be up to how much time was left on the clock. Did this foot go out of bounds there at the last second? See now, earlier on in that sequence there, it looked like Labriola had the takedown mm -hmm. and they didn't call it. And then they scrambled again and he got it on the edge and they gave it to him. And that was actually a little bit closer a, a little bit closer call. So we'll see here again. Right there, it looks like two. He has the ankle and he's, and he's, but they haven't given it yet. And then once he comes here, we'll see if he goes out of bounds or not. It looks like he have kept that foot in. Yeah, he was hanging on there by just a thread of keeping his foot in. Referee's still taking a look at it. Again, it's either gonna be a 3-1-1 for Labriola or 1-1 one, one, and we go to overtime. And it's awfully close. Mm -hmm. It's awfully close. Tom Ryan challenging the call. And it would be huge. Who's gonna take the lead in this duel? And again, this will come back because this has the possibility of being what the Penn State duel was for Nebraska, that 20 to 18 loss. This could be a two, three point duel. Definitely a huge call coming up here. The and they're gonna give Labriola the two, and he will get the win. The crowd is happy about that one. Mikey Labriola gets a takedown at the last possible second and gets the win over Caleb L Romero, three to one, and Nebraska leads the duel 3-0. Just an excellent match to start this duel out, and we're probably going to have a few more of these kinds of matches, so. Wow. 184, it's gonna be Rocky Jordan for Ohio State, ranking number 24 in the country, going against number nine, Taylor Venz of Nebraska. And this is another one where Nebraska wants to get this win. They are favored and they, and either, and in order to win today's duel, they can't drop ones like this where they're favored like this one. No, they can't, uh, but man, the name Jordan, isn't that synonymous with Ohio State wrestling in the last few years? Bo Jordan, Micah Jordan, and, and now Rocky Jordan for Ohio State. Rocky Jordan has uh, wrestled quite a few matches already this season, 20 and three and six on the year, three and three in Big Ten duels, while for Taylor Venz, 12 and six on the year, five and three in duels, two and two in Big Ten duels. One of the leaders on this Nebraska team with five pins. And you had to flash back to January 18th where he defeated number six Aaron Brooks, nine to five against Penn State was his first top 10 win. And that was big, I think, just for his confidence because before that, he was on a little over sputter. Yeah, you know, Venz is, he's kind of an interesting guy, um, but uh, extremely dangerous. Uh, almost knocked off number one ranked Zahid Valencia early in the year. Had more takedowns than Valencia did in that match. Um, you know, Ta Taylor Venz can beat anybody on any day, so. We have a stalemate. Both will reset here at neutral position. But for Venz, he's coming off a hiccup last Sunday against Michigan State. Lost to number 17, Cam Caffey, 11 to six. And uh, Drew, we were there for that, and that was a, a match where Venz was leading almost the entire way. Then that third period, Caffey flipped it around and got the win. It maybe let that thing slip away a little bit in the third period, but, uh, you know, Cam Caffey, another quality opponent, um, you know, just like Jordan here is in this match. So, um, again, you know, we may see this thing come down to the third period. Nice scramble here 
between Jordan and Vins. They're halfway through the first period and another stalemate is called. We'll reset. Just got an update. It is only two to nothing, Nebraska, because Mikey Labriola got an unsportsmanlike foul, I guess you would say, because he got point taken away. And I think that's because at the end of the period where he got that takedown last second, he threw down his headgear in celebration. And I think that's what they got him for. Yeah, that that almost has to be what it was for. I mean, he was excited to win the match. Maybe got, let his emotions get the best of him just a little bit. And and you do see that for various reasons. Uh, Nebraska lost a team point. It's now two to zero. And again, again that <laughs> down the line, that could be big. It, it could be huge in a, in a duel that's this close between two relatively even match teams uh, every point matters 35 seconds to go here in this first period Ben's locking his hand around Jordan's thighs looking to flip him here but Jordan hanging on to Vince's ankle with all he can muster and again we're gonna have our third stalemate call of the period reset with 22 seconds to go and we've seen that position a few times in this matchup alone here in the first period uh, and, and Vince looks pretty comfortable there uh, not really in any real danger of getting taken down. 0-0 zero, zero between the two. Vens from Farmington, Minnesota, went to Farmington High School. One of the top wrestlers out of Minnesota that year as the buzzer goes and we go to the second period tied at zero. Well, for Rocky Jordan, he is from St. Paris, Ohio, the red shirt freshman, went to St. Paris Graham High School. And St. Paris Graham is known nationally as one of the top wrestling high schools in the country. Uh, wonderful pedigree there. Uh, you know, again, his brothers, Bo and Micah, were both all Americans for the Buckeyes. Um, you know, quite quite a wrestling family. Cousins were out at Wisconsin wrestling as well, and, and they got a, the name Jordan is a big wrestling name. Uh, Rocky Jordan show, certainly showed what he can do back at St. Paris Graham, was a three-time state champion, had a career high school record of 174-8. and eight, As it looks like we will have injury time here as they're looking at Benz's left hand. So we'll have a stoppage here. But 2 nothing Nebraska leads. If you didn't catch it, Mikey Labriola had a 3-1 win against Caleb Romero got the takedown with about two seconds to go to win it. Threw down his headgear in celebration, and uh, a team point was deducted for unsportsmanlike conduct. Something that might factor in later down the line. As we begin this second period, events will be on bottom. Jordan on top, 30 seconds in. Riding time, 30 seconds in favor of Jordan. Bends to his feet. Looking for a switch there. Jordan doing a good job here on top. Certainly trying to grind down the Nebraska All-American, Taylor Venz. Finished fourth place at the NCAA Championships two years ago. Did not place last year. And for Jordan, this is his um, 30th match of the season. That's quite a few matches. A lot of open tournaments for Jordan. Coming off a stretch here where he had three ranked wrestlers and in a row. And there's a reversal for Venz. Taylor Venz almost had a cradle locked up, but a reversal makes it two to nothing. And Venz leads it with just under 30 seconds to go here in the second period. He was oh so close to locking up a cradle. That was awfully close, and it was actually very, very important for him to get out or even or get a reversal because Jordan had run up the riding time up to almost a minute and a half. Benz will cut down on that riding time. It's now at 50 seconds in favor of Jordan as time ticks down here in this second period. Two to nothing, and Taylor Benz leads on the reversal as we go to the third. As Nebraska looks to pick up another win here to begin this duel, but Jordan certainly not out of this one yet. 
Yeah, and I, I, the old Ohio State coaches went neutral pretty quickly. They didn't want to go on bottom. Shot attempt by Venz. Defended well by Jordan. Again, another shot by Venz. Jordan trying to swirl around here and try to tie things up. Minute 35 to go. And a takedown from Jordan with any time prior to 15 seconds left in the match, he could potentially get that riding time back and, and um, win the match. So it will be big for, for Vince to, to kind of stay on top of things here to ice this match. Shot there by Jordan. He's got a single leg in deep. Jordan still working away here on Venz. Venz sprawling out. Jordan so close here to a takedown. They're back on their feet now. Jordan looking for a trip. Or get Venz on the ground. 45 seconds to go. And, and they give to the, the ground. Takedown. There's the takedown. Riding time will go up for Jordan. It's up to 50 seconds. Both will go out of bounds. And again, 36 seconds to go. Riding time up to 52 seconds for Jordan. And if riding time gets over a minute, Jordan will get a bonus point and win this match. Excellent job by Jordan on the takedown. Single leg takedown. Elevated the leg. Got Benz to the mat. Got his two. And again, he's five seconds away from getting over a minute of riding time, which would give him the lead in the match. And now it is at a minute and one second. So Venz will need the escape to tie it here. 20 seconds. Jordan looking for the upset win. Doing a tough job on top, riding hard here. Benz needs to get to his base, build up to get an escape. Five seconds to go. And it's not going to do it. Rocky Jordan will get his first career top 10 win. And it comes against Taylor Benz, 3-2. The takedown with 36 seconds to go, plus the riding time, gets the win for Ohio State, and they take the lead in the duel, 3-2. to two. Great decision by the Ohio State coaches to have him go neutral there in the third period. Got the takedown, got the riding time point, and um, a 3-2 to two lead now for Ohio State. And now we move on to 197 pounds. It is our feature match of the day. It is number one, Colin Moore, undefeated at 21-0, taking on number 10, Eric Schultz, 17-2. Like we mentioned pregame, these two very familiar with each other. It's the fifth all-time meeting, and uh, their action dates back to two years ago. The first time they met, Moore won at 3-2, and just going back last year in Columbus, Moore had to go to overtime and got the 7-5 win over Schultz. I've um, been talking to Schultz earlier this week. He's confident his mental game. He said it's the strongest it's ever been, and he's ready to compete against the number one wrestler here in the country. Quick takedown by Moore, but you're absolutely right. Schultz has a lot of momentum here. He beat Warner from Iowa, who was highly ranked just a couple weekends ago, and Warner was the guy who had beaten Schultz twice prior to that. And uh, we have two takedowns by Moore and escape by Schultz, so it's four to one. And talking with Schultz as well, he said that he notices about Moore, he likes to really attack and go for a takedown within the first 10 seconds. He doesn't wait around. And he just showed it right there. It's an early 4-1 lead for number one Moore. Another, looking to get another escape. There it is, so it's four to two. Moore has really come out and set the tone here. Yeah. Two quick takedowns, great takedown attempts by Moore. And he's in the driver's seat early. A minute in, already four to two. Moore leads. Schultz from Tinley Park, Illinois. Went to Tinley Park High School while Colin Moore from Burbank, Ohio. And went to Norway High School. Moore, the defending runner-up at 197 pounds, lost last year to Bo Nickel at both the Big Ten Championships and the NSA, NCAA Championships. Moore's name has been at the top the last few years at 197 pounds, third 
in 2018 and second, as you mentioned, last season. Looking for that title this year. He's really, um, you know, the front runner heading into the season, and he's defended his number one ranking quite well. And something that we did mention, too, this would be his second, only second top ten opponent of the year. Otherwise, he's only had, this will be his sixth, uh, check that. That will be the ninth ranked matchup he's had this year. And again, they haven't, no one inside the top ten except for two opponents. So this, you, you could say probably his second real test of the year so far. Yeah, and, and he's been tested a few times, but man, the majority of the time, Colin Moore is a bonus point machine. Mm -hmm. um, several of those ranked opponents he's wrestled, he's beaten by major decisions or even tech falls. So, you know, Colin Moore is dangerous. He's a takedown artist. Um, Schultz has done a good job after giving up those first two takedowns of slowing Moore down a little bit here, but he's going to need some takedowns of his own to get this get back in this match. 17 of 20. And there's that One second matches. takedown by Colin Moore, a little dump off Fireman's. That was that was just textbook stuff. 20 seconds to go here in this first period. 17 of the 21 matches this year, Moore has wrestled. All those have come via bonus points. As you look to go for a shot there, nice de defense by Schultz as the final seconds tick away here in this opening period. And the buzzer goes, and at the end of the first period, Colin Moore leads Eric Schultz 4-2. to Plenty of action. Plenty of action. Moore has set the tone in this match, 4-2. to uh, But Schultz is going to go down to start the second period, and if he gets out, we're a 4-3 match. It could be anyone's match yet. So Schultz on bottom. Moore, the redshirt senior, while Schultz is a junior. But again, this is their fifth all-time meeting. Moore is 4-0 all-time against Schultz, but all have come via decision. And Colin Moore is approaching a minute of riding time here. That would give him the riding time point if he were to end the match with over a minute. And there it is. It is now over a minute of riding time for Colin Moore. As we are under a minute and 30 seconds here in the second period. So we saw the first period, two takedowns for Moore, and now Moore showing that he's uh, pretty tough on top mm -hmm. as well. Schultz trying to at least try to get to his feet. Minute to go in the second period. Moore grinding down Schultz here. Looking for the head pinch a little bit. And both will go out of bounds and reset with Schultz on bottom. 48 seconds to go, riding time up to a minute 54 for Moore. Minute 44, check that. And again, Moore just returning Schultz to the mat, really grinding down the junior for Nebraska. Nice, nice little mat return there. Went, split the legs, got him back down. 30 seconds to go here in the second period, over two minutes now of riding time for Colin Moore. Under 20 seconds. Moore been on top of Schultz the entire second period. Riding time up to two minutes and 20 seconds. Certainly not what you wanted to see from Nebraska's perspective as the second period comes to an end. Four to two, Moore leads. Moore will get the choice here to begin the third period. He will go on bottom, Schultz on top. And we'll and see if Schultz is going to try to ride here and get some near fall points or if he's going to let Moore up and Moore's gonna get the mm -hmm. quick escape. Makes it five to two more, and he goes in on a shot right away. And again, just constant attack by Moore. Keeping Schultz honest here as it's five to two, 20 seconds into the third period. Riding time at two minutes, 27 seconds for Moore. So right now he has the bonus point locked up. So
So effectively, score is 6-2 to two in favor of Colin Moore. Schultz is going to need a little bit of magic here. Moore has just done an excellent job controlling the tempo on his feet, riding tough in the second period. Excellent job by Colin Moore. Almost certainly seems like Schultz will need to get more on his back if he wants any chance of winning this one. As nope. we have a minute to go here in this third period. He'll need something big. He's he's figured out more a little bit in the past based on that overtime win last year, but um, man, Moore looks really sharp. Yeah. Both go out of bounds. They're going to reset in neutral position with 50.2 seconds to go. And stoppage right there quickly. Quick stoppage. Schultz kind of tapped the head a little mm -hmm. bit, and they just wanted to make sure things were on the up and up. 35 seconds to go. Schultz needs something to happen here. Twenty-five seconds. Colin Moore looking to secure the win here for Ohio State and move to twenty-two and zero. And Colin Moore has shown us that he's solid in all phases right now, and that is why he's the number one guy. Great takedowns, got up off bottom quickly, and, and rode tough. Colin Moore, he's your favorite at 197 pounds in the NCAA right now. And there's the final, 6-2. to two. Colin Moore moves to 5-0 and all time against Eric Schultz and gets the decision for Ohio State. And the Buckeyes extend their lead over Nebraska 6-2 to two as we move to heavyweight. And now as we move on to heavyweight for Nebraska, they're going to send out Christian Lance. While for Ohio State, it's going to be Gary Traub. Traub ranked number 23 in the country. And let's check that. It's not going to be Christian Lance. It's going to be David Jensen. And we saw Jensen last week wrestle against Michigan State, picked up a win. National qualifier a year ago for the Huskers. He's been splitting time at 285 against uh, gas tank Gary Traub. Uh, known for winning matches in the third period. We'll see how this one goes. David Jensen, senior from Robridge, South Dakota. Well, for Traub, he is from Cincinnati, Ohio. Redshirt junior for Traub as well. As again, this is another one that's going to be, uh, it's flippy here at heavyweight. Jensen got the start last week, and it's got the win over Michigan State a week ago. And again, it's been predominantly Christian Lance who's been in there at heavyweight. But the last couple of weeks, Mark Manning and the staff going with David Jensen, who competed almost all year last year at heavyweight for Nebraska and was ranked, in fact, coming into this season. Yeah, you know, national qualifier. Uh, you know, Nebraska has two pretty solid options at 285 pounds, so I'm sure the coaches feel confident in whoever they put out there. 0-0 zero, zero between the two here. A little over a minute in to this opening period. And you could just tell, at least from the size perspective, Jensen way bigger than Traub. Yes, uh, Traub is an undersized 285, and boy, he has been through the ringer lately. In his last seven matches, he has had four top six opponents along the way, and he's dropped all of those, but uh, definitely been in the matches. Good shot by Traub. Traub trying to get the first points here of this match at 285 pounds. Traub looks to continue to drive. Jensen looking to hang on, and no, he's going to give up there. And Traub gets the first two points with a takedown. Nice shot attempt. And, and as a smaller 285, sometimes you worry about your guy getting in on shots on those big guys like Jensen, but he yeah, excellent job of finishing through that shot. Escape, Escape for Jensen. Makes it two to one, 50 seconds to go here in this opening period. Riding time not a factor, only 14 seconds in favor of Traub.
And we'll see here throughout this match if Traub might be a little more comfortable on his feet. He did a pretty good job there on that first takedown. Again, he's going to try to use that advantage of his quickness because he certainly seems like he's faster out there than Jensen. 20 seconds to go. Five seconds in, we will go into the second period with Gary Traub leading David Jensen two to one. And as we suspected a little bit, Traub elects to go neutral to start the second period. Probably doesn't want to go underneath of a big guy like Jensen. Um, and again, he got the first takedown, so we'll, maybe he'll try and tack onto it here. Traub three in three in Big Ten duels this year. Jensen, who hasn't had as much experience, is two and one in duels overall. But he was the guy last year for the yeah. Huskers, and he picked up a win against Iowa last year against, uh, at the time, third-ranked Sam Stoll. So uh, Jensen is no stranger to, to dual competition. Now Traub looking to go for another takedown. Got a single leg here. Almost the same position where he scored from earlier, but uh, Jensen has done a better job here getting his hips up on top, looking for two on the edge. Nothing called as they both go out of bounds, and we're going to reset in the neutral position. Good scramble there by both guys. Similar position, which was won by Traub the first time, scoring two. Jensen actually did a better job there, getting his hips on top, almost got two for himself. Minute to go in the second period. Traub leads it two to one. As we are through three weights, the fourth weight of the day, Ohio State leads it six to two. And the reason Nebraska only has two, because back in the opening weight of the day at 174 pounds, Mikey Labriola on a last second takedown spiked his headgear on the ground, got an unsportsmanlike conduct. So that is why it is only six to two. And Jensen goes in for a single leg, got one locked up. He'll look to build up with that single leg. If he can elevate Traub a little bit, he'll be in good shape. But it looks like Traub has his head to the inside now, and that is not a good position to be in for Jensen. And now, nice scramble by both guys. And wow. Jensen continues and gets the takedown and takes the lead 3-2 as the second period comes to an end. Huge, huge takedown for David Jensen. And Traub just let go, and Jensen took advantage. Interesting little little exchange there. Uh, you know, Jensen had the shot attempt. Traub looked like he had defended it pretty well, but Jensen almost swimmed through a little bit, and Traub went straight to the mat. Escape for Jensen. He has the 4-2 lead. Riding time, not a factor. Takedowns at the end of a period are gigantically huge in these kinds of matches. Uh, no chance for Traub to get out and get one. And he will have to go on offense here and get a takedown to tie this thing up. 25 seconds in. A huge takedown by David Jensen at the end of the second period. An escape here to begin the third to make it four to two. Four straight unanswered points by Jensen after Traub got a takedown in the opening period. Got a minute to go. Riding time, not a factor. 14 seconds is all. Under a minute to go. Traub is I see goes for attack. Traub after the stall warning on mm -hmm. Jensen. And Scramble situation. Jensen looking to get on time and get the two, and he's going to get it. David Jensen with another takedown to make it 6-2 with 35 seconds to go. Excellent defense there by Jensen. Uh, must have learned something there in the first period off of a similar shot attempt because the last two he's defended quite well. The throw attempt and from Traub. Not going to work. Jensen, another two. 
Eight to three with 15 seconds to go. Another mat return. And David Jensen, the senior for Nebraska, gets the win at heavyweight eight to three and makes the score, cuts the lead to one. It's 6-5 Ohio State. Back-to-back -back home wins for Jensen. Really wrestled well the latter half of that match. So Jensen gets the win, eight to three, a big win for Nebraska in a weight that was considered a flip. And now up for 125 for Ohio State is gonna be Malik Henselman. And then for Nebraska, it's Alex Thompson. Thompson on a two match winning streak for Nebraska. Won it. Penn State and Michigan State back to back. Close matches. Redshirt freshman. And this is a guy for Nebraska and Thompson who might not have the best record. He's eight and nine, but Mark May and his staff has high expectations and thinks really highly of him. Yeah, and, and Thompson is is a takedown machine, um, four time state champion out of Iowa. Um, high, pretty highly touted recruit. Uh, you know, same can be said for uh, Heinzelman. He's an NCAA qualifier last year. Mm -hmm. So this will be a good barometer for both of these guys. Heinzelman hasn't always uh, been on the mat this year for the Buckeyes, uh, 9 and 12 on the year. So maybe a big match for these guys uh, to kind of set the tone for the latter half, latter half of their season. Heinzelman only 1 and 4 in Big Ten duels. While Thompson 3 and 4. Both guys feeling each other out here. Heinzelman, of course, like Drew mentioned, he qualified for the NCAA championships a year ago as the 25th seed, due in part to a ninth place finish at the Big Ten Championships. But he didn't enter the lineup for the Buckeyes until January 11th of last year. Turned that into an NCAA qualification and has put that momentum into use and has Took the opening spot here at 125 pounds for the Buckeyes. As we were halfway through the first period, still tied at zero. Yeah, last year, Heinzelman, I believe, is a true freshman, entered the lineup in January. They felt like he was their best guy, uh, best for their team at the weight at that time. Uh, Thompson redshirted last year. So these guys, same age, um, similar records, and we can probably really expect a, a relatively close match. Thompson looking to go on the attack, but Heinzelman gets up in time to defend as we approach a minute to go here in this opening period. Six to five, Ohio State leads Nebraska in this duel. Through four weights, as we'll get a reset here. In the middle, as the mat is centered today for Nebraska here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. So then usually isn't the case. Second time they've centered it this year. They also centered it and rose it three feet in the air against Penn State. And uh, if you watch that one on Big Ten Network, that mm -hmm. was quite the duel. Um, came down to the last match. Uh, Penn State was able to edge Nebraska 20 to 18. Uh, they're the number two team. Ohio State's number three. Uh, so Nebraska's trying to show that they kind of belong up there with the top couple teams in the nation. Heinzelman on the attack, looking to finish through with a single leg. Continues to drive, but Alex Thompson, impressive defense. Avoids the takedown with 10 seconds to go. Man, that was an excellent shot attempt from Heinzelman and just as good a defense in return from Thompson because that was a quick little duck under from Heinzelman there. And Thompson, nice scramble defense, avoids the takedown. And we are tied at zero, heading into the second period. And there's that shot attempt from Heinzelman. Hit a duck hunter, switched off to a high C. Thompson did a great job of squaring up there and avoiding the two because, man, it looked like Heinzelman was almost around behind him. Thompson from Neola, Iowa, while Heinzelman is from Castle Rock, Colorado. 
And that's a quick escape for Alex Thompson, who, you know, if you've done a little scouting report on him, maybe maybe a little worried about um, him coming up off the bottom. Um, you know, he's had some matches where he's gotten given up near fall points and that kind of thing. So surely Nebraska's working on that with him. Great escape for Thompson there. We'll see if we can get some more exciting exchanges here on their feet. 30 seconds into the second period, one to nothing. Thompson leads over Heinzelman. And again, like we mentioned before, this is another one that's a flip between the two teams. And with the Labriola point taken away, it's really gonna come down to who's gonna win these flip uh, matches. It really is, and this is just one of two matches tonight where um, neither wrestler is ranked in the top 25 in the country. Um, but again, Heinzelman is a returning qualifier, and Thompson is on a two-match win streak. And both of these guys um, certainly have the capability of making another trip to the national tournament. And before that win against Penn State for Thompson, he was on a four-match losing streak and snapped that as a uh, two-match winning streak here. It really has flipped the momentum for himself because things were looking dire for the redshirt freshman. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, with young guys like that, that's, that's kind of all it takes is, is a little a big win, big crowd against Penn State, and, and Thompson looks pretty sharp here. Excellent job getting out off bottom. And there's a shot oh. attempt from Heinzelman. Heinzelman looking to drive and finish it. But Thompson continuing to hang on. 15 seconds. And, and they're the going to give the takedown to Heinzelman, and they take – Heinzelman takes the lead 2-1. to one. Stalemate, and Heinzelman was on a little bit of a losing streak himself. He he had a six-match losing streak, five of those to ranked guys, um, but he was able to break that streak against Maryland the other night, um, and he's going to look to build a little momentum of his own. That was against Brandon Cray, a 7-2 decision win. Thompson looking to get the reversal, and they're going to give the escape was the original call, and they're going to take a look at it. It was awfully close to the end of the period. Sometimes in these kind of situations, they may not give the two, but if, as long as Heinzelman lost control on top, that qualifies an escape, as an escape for Thompson. So you might see the officials award one point for Thompson. We'll look the, at it again. And, there was, and it looked like before the referee put his hand up to say timer ran out, it looked like Thompson clearly had the reversal. Six seconds, I think, there at the start of that, and it looked like he got out, out within the six seconds. At different vantage point. Good hand control from Thompson. Switched his hips out there and got around. Looks like they'll probably yeah. give him at least one and maybe the two for the reversal. The referee at the end of the period gave up a one for the escape. The only question will be whether or not they give him the reversal. As Husker Faithful saw it on the jumbo screen and they say they want two for the reversal. And they're gonna give him the reversal. Alex Thompson retakes the lead at the end of the second period, three to two. And Drew, like we mentioned, takedowns at the end of the period are huge, but same thing goes with the reversals. So are reversals. Wow, what a flip in momentum there. It looked like Heinzelman was going to take a two to one lead heading into the third period in the driver's seat basically and, and Thompson really flipped the script there was six seconds to go. We were just talking a little bit about uh, you know a scouting report on Thompson struggling up off the bottom a little bit. Escape, reversal in that second period and he's in the lead. Riding time not a factor, only 15 seconds in favor of Heinzelman. And he's gonna go neutral to start the third. He's got the takedown, he's got in on the legs a couple times. Probably a wise decision there. Heinzelman went for the attack. It missed, and Thompson almost caught Heinzelman off guard. 25 seconds into this third period. Heinzelman deep in on a shot, but Thompson again gets out of it. Jeez, man. Wow. Heinzelman has excellent level change, very quick. Uh, we, we've seen some fantastic defense because he was in deep, had a body lock, and, and Thompson fought out of it. 45 seconds in to this final third period. 
Three to two, Thompson leads. Since riding time is not a factor, Heinzman will need a takedown here to take the lead. Under a minute to go. Heinzelman, he's been close several times on multiple shot attempts. Uh, we haven't seen too many from Thompson, and there's the warning there. And Stall warning, but Thompson gets the takedown. <laughs> Drew Reiser who said it. There goes Thompson and extends his lead to 5-2. Nice Matt return from Thompson. A Matt return with authority from the redshirt freshman. Under 30 seconds to go. And we've seen it a few times this match. Great defense from Thompson. He may have given up the stall warning, but again, solid defense. This time got two for himself. And he's in control here. Another Matt return. 10 seconds to go. One more for good measure here. Three seconds left. And Alex Thompson, 5-2 to winner. The crowd loves it. Alex Thompson gets the win for Nebraska, 125 pounds. Another flip match that goes Nebraska's way, and the Cornhuskers take an 8-6 lead in this duel. Third straight match, Thompson wins. And now moving on to 133 pounds. For Ohio State, it's going to be Jordan Decatur, a freshman from Akron, Ohio. And then for Nebraska, is going to be Ridge Lovett, the freshman from Post Falls, Idaho. Decatur ranked 21, Lovett ranked 14. Nebraska favored in this one, but Decatur is no slouch, Drew. He, he's not, and these are two of the better, young, true freshman wrestlers in the Big Ten this year. Contrast in styles. We should be in for an, an exciting match here. Jordan Decatur on the year is 10 and 6, 1 and 5 in Big Ten duels. Similar record, in fact, to Ridge Lovett. He's 1 and 5 in duels. 1 and 3 in the Big Ten. Decatur, he was a two time state champion. In Ohio, 133 and seven in high school, four-time Ironman placer, three-time Fargo freestyle champion, whereas Lovett is a Greco Far Fargo champion. So two of the best international style wrestlers, um, you know, coming out of high school. Um, uh, we're going to see some conflicting styles here, and it's a, been an interesting road for Ridge Lovett, coming in as a freshman, very highly ranked. Uh, coming in as the number 19th overall recruit, according to Flow Wrestling. Comes in, doesn't start the first uh, duel against Wyoming, but then against Northern Iowa, gets subbed in. They burn his red shirt to take on uh, Jack Skudlarzik of Northern Iowa. He lost the match 8-2, but he then went on to finish third place at the Cliff King Invite and has provided stability at 133 pounds, wrestling some of the top guys in the nation. Really, really tough. Yeah, you know, freshman coming out of red shirt, that, you know, first match on the road, hostile environment against Northern Iowa. Dropped that one, but um, he really, really impressed at the Cliff Keen tournament in December in Las Vegas and uh, picked up his first Big Ten dual win a week ago. And, and Decatur's actually done the same thing here. Uh, just recently against Minnesota, picked up a major decision win for his first ten, Big Ten dual win as well. The match that really put Lovett on the national scene was his win against then number nine, Taylor Lamont of Utah Valley at the Cliff Keen invite. As both guys, it's scoreless here with a minute to go in this opening period, 133 pounds. Nebraska leads the duel eight to six over the Buckeyes through five weights. Fifty seconds to go. Not a ton of action just yet, um, which honestly might benefit Lovett a little bit. He's known to be pretty tough on top, mm -hmm. so we'll see. And he's proved that more specifically against Austin DeSanto of Iowa when they had their match last month. As Decatur has a leg of Lovett wrapped up, but they both get on their feet. Lovett avoids 
Any He's danger is now he looks to get a takedown here near the edge of the mat. On the edge. Nice exchange. Both go out of bounds. We'll reset with 15 seconds to go. Not much movement here to end the period. Five seconds left. And that's going to do it for the first period. Not much has happened as it's 0-0 going to the second. Lovett had a three-match stretch in a row where he wrestled the number one ranked wrestler, the number two ranked wrestler, and the number three ranked wrestler consecutively. And he may have dropped those three matches, but uh, you know he was relatively competitive in all of them. Um, definitely one to watch as young as he is down the stretch. So you give him another year and he could really create some havoc at the 133 pound division. Again, both these guys, true freshmen, could be seeing a lot of these two in the coming years in the Big Ten. 30 seconds into the second period, still tied at zero. Decatur was on top to start. Love it to his feet, but a nice mat return. And Decatur doing a great job here on top. Riding time up to 40 seconds for Decatur. You almost have to imagine if Decatur's able to get the riding time point here and take a 1-0 lead into the third, that he'll probably choose neutral going into the third period. Both guys will go out of bounds. are going to reset riding time up to 54 seconds with a minute six to go in the second period. And we will have a caution on Lovett as they resume things here in this second period. Still 0-0. Zero, zero. Love it to his feet. Matt return by Decatur as the freshman from Akron, Ohio continues to grind down on Lovett. He did a good job with the mat return and then following the Granby attempt from Lovett as well. Now Decatur looking to get Lovett on his back. But nothing happened there and what looked like could be we're potential two scramble. now for Lovett. Nebraska wants two. And they're calling stalling on Decatur because he held on below the knee without trying to improve his position. The referees will give them five seconds before calling the stall warning. So referee, a stall on Decatur. And they're going to go take a look. I think they're going to take a look at whether or not it's a takedown for Lovett. A reversal for Lovett. It, it was close, but, uh, you, you know, Decatur never broke his lock on that leg. So this one will be tough to overturn. Again, that would be big. 28 seconds to go here in the second period as we take another look at it. Right there he has the leg. So Lavette is unable to get behind his hips all the way. They did call the stall warning. I don't think you'll see any change here. Certainly doesn't look like a referee's taking a look. But the stall warning itself could play a factor in the third period with if, if Lovett is indeed trailing in the third period. Um, we are up to a minute and 27 seconds of riding time for Decatur. In this act, a bigger decision here by the referees. This one's been close all the way. And again, this one will be huge in terms of deciding the winner of this duel. Nebraska leads it eight to six. As here come the referees. And no, they're not gonna call a reversal for Lovett. Just a stall warning on Decatur. So Lovett will go back, down, go back down on bottom. Decatur on top with 28 seconds to go in the second period. An escape would be big for Lovett. Right, a ride out would be big for Decatur to essentially get himself a riding time point. 
There's the escape by Lovett. First points of the match, one to nothing. 15 seconds to go. And now Decatur gets the takedown for two points. Monster throw by there from Decatur. Gets a big two-point takedown. Riding time bonus point is locked up for Decatur. It's up to a minute 34 riding time. Seven seconds to go here in the second period. Love it. Almost gets to, gets out of it for an escape. One second. And looking for call by the referee. He was down on the ankle again and the referee counted to four at one more second on the clock and that's a stall warning and Decatur's going to go neutral in the third. Two to one, Decatur leads, but the riding time bonus point is up to a minute 41, so Decatur has that point in his back pocket. So a takedown would essentially tie things up. And Decatur on his feet has been the aggressor for the most part, so Levette's going to have to dig into something here, find a way to get a takedown to get back in this thing. And there's a nice fireman's attempt. And love it, trying to get back. the takedown. Looking for a cradle now. Still no call oh by the referee. That was close. We're still on the edge here. Love it, still with the leg. Pulling him in, and there's the two. There it is. All right, three to two. Love it leads on the scoreboard, but riding time up to a minute 30 and, for Decatur. And so he, it's essentially tied. But if Lovett can ride out Decatur, but Decatur looking for the reversal, and he's going to get it. And they do not like, the coaches do not like that there. And right away, Mark Manning throws the challenge brick. And Drew, what are they going to look at here? Maybe a couple things. Um, the first being, did he actually get the reversal? It looked like Lovett still sort of had a whizzer in. And then once they gave the two, he was he had a, the body locked still. So I think the Nebraska coaches are asking for a locked hands call. As we take another look at the reversal. So we'll get that back up quickly, but as you saw Brian Snyder and Mark Manning for Nebraska, they had the locked hand call. They want, they want to take a look at the locked hands. And there he comes out the back, Decatur comes out the back, around the waist, and Lovett looking for a headlock there. He switches to a whizzer. There's the whizzer, and he's got the hands locked there. So the, the coaches are asking for a locked mm -hmm. hands call because they gave the two first, and you can't lock your hands on top. Again, this would be huge. Love it. Tied it up at three because of the riding time bonus point. But again, this would give Decatur a 5-3 lead if they uphold the reversal. Around the waist. And it just kind of depends on when they award the two. He awards the two here, and his hands are still locked, and he eventually lets go. But it looks like they could call that as a locked hands call. So Lovett gets the takedown there to take a three to two lead. We're talking about riding time a little bit. Right now, there's a minute and 30 seconds left in favor of Decatur. If Lovett would have ridden out the period on top, he would have erased the riding time and won the match three to two. So great job by Decatur getting out on someone known for being a good rider. One more look at it. And yeah, you can see the hands are locked. And he see, let's go, but they call the reversal before he lets go of the hands. And the referee's taking their time here, making sure they get the correct call. Again, this flips the entire match around. Up to a minute and 26 of riding time. So Decatur does have the bonus point. But again, if they don't award the reversal, they'll reset with Love it on top and would give him the opportunity to ride out and get they rid are, of that bonus point. They are calling, they, so they're going to stick with the reversal, and they are calling the locked hands. One for Lovett, ties it up four to four. 53 seconds left, and, but a minute and 25 seconds of riding time for Decatur. So Lovett will need the escape to tie it. 
because right now, minute 25 of riding time for Decatur, and he's only going to ride it up here. Not quite officially locked up, but he's getting closer. Um, Lovett surely only has one thing on his mind, and that's getting out at bottom. But we've seen a lot of good Lovett riding. Lovett tries from to roll, nothing there. A lot of good riding and a stall warning, which we also need to keep in mind. 40 seconds to go. Riding time locked up for Decatur. So Lovett needs the escape. Another roll, nothing going. 25 seconds. Decatur trying to hold on. 15 seconds. Love Enter. it for the reversal. reversal. He's got the leg hooked. Five seconds. They give it the reversal. two. The reversal for Ridge Love it. And he's going to win it by the skin of his teeth. Ridge Love it. Another last second win for Nebraska. After riding time, final score six to five. Lovett scooted his hips around and got the reversal to win the match. Wow. Nebraska extends their lead. It's 11 to six. Ridge Lovett, second straight Big Ten win as he pumps his fist to the crowd. A huge win for Nebraska. And now a big one at 141 pounds. It is number six, Chandra Jr. for the Cornhuskers, taking on number one, Luke Pletcher of Ohio State. Pletcher, the senior, 21-0. Red, the junior, 12-6 on the year. And you got these next couple of weights, Ohio State heavily favored. And you hate to automatically give this loss to Nebraska because Red can obviously pull up an upset if he can. But again, for Nebraska, if you lose this, it needs to be a decision. Yeah, the first time they met, 11-3 major decision win for Pletcher this season at the Las Vegas Cliff Keen Invitational. Uh, but, but these guys, man, they have a heck of a history going back all the way to high school. They wrestled in the Who's Number One in the Nation tournament. Um, Chad Red won that one. They're both a couple-time All-Americans. Um, you know, and Chad Red, he's electric. He got the pin last week here against Michigan State. Uh, you can't count him out of any match. Pletcher uh, used to be known as a little bit of a, a maybe not defensive wrestler, but he'd win these narrow matches. Uh, but, boy, he's really opened it up this year. He's won... He's won big plenty of times. Fletcher recently this season got his 100th career win. He's 21-0 on the season, has certainly faced top competition, 11-0 against top 25 opponents, including a recent win against Minnesota's Mitch McKee, 12-6. He's beaten Chad Red by major decision. He beat number four Moran from Wisconsin by major decision. Um, beat the then number one ranked wrestler Demas from Oklahoma to become the number one guy himself. Um, really excellent season so far up to this point from Luke Pletcher. And, uh, you know, again, these guys have a lot of, a lot of history going back to high school. Uh, so we'll see what Chad Red can do in front of his home crowd too and, and see if he can, uh, you know, dig into that 11-3 loss he had last time they wrestled. Fletcher from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, went to Greater Latrobe High School uh, for Chad Red Jr. He's from Indianapolis, Indiana, from New Palestine High School. And Chad Red just got warned for stalling there. He, he kind of backed up a little bit going off the mat. Um, pretty early to get a stall warning, so you know we'll see how that may affect the rest of the match. Minute to go here in this first period. Still tied at zero between the two. Under a minute to go. Chad Red earlier this year, fifth at the Cliff Keen in fights. Of course, Pletcher won that in their weight. Still in neutral position here, 40 seconds to go. Pletcher looking on a single leg, looks to drive just, and get the two points for the takedown. Just excellent job there from Pletcher, keeping Chad Red a little off balance, moving his head to the side, spinning around and getting two. That's just great stuff. So both go out of bounds. We'll reset here. With Pletcher leading red two to nothing, 27 seconds to go. And we will have a caution on red. Back 
Back up and rolling. Red to his feet. Matt returned there by Pletcher, but Red immediately back up and as they go out of bounds once again. And you can't say Chad Red isn't an athlete. Most argue, he could be the most <laughs> athletic on this team. You could make an argument. Yeah, yeah, he, he is electric. He just really is. And, and a standing Granby there um, from his feet. Uh, you know, you, you could never know what to expect with Chad Red, and, and uh, he's a dangerous wrestler as well. And things can end in an instant, uh, whether he's ahead or behind. I'm trying to compete here with Luke Pletcher as the final seconds go off the clock. We go to the second period. With Pletcher leading two to nothing, due in part to this only takedown of the period by Pletcher. And you can see him forcing the head down there, moving it to the side, dropping to the leg and getting two there. I mean, that's just an excellent takedown by Luke Pletcher against a really good Chad Red. Caution there on Pletcher as we begin things here in the second period. Also noteworthy that Pletcher was able to ride Chad Red out the rest of the period. Um, you know, always nice to go in ahead by two after the first period instead of having it be two to one. Pletcher coming off a year which he finished fourth at the NCAA championships a year ago, an improvement from his 2017 season where he lost in the round of 16. Both guys got down once again. We'll reset with a minute 43 to go. Pletcher still leads it two to nothing. Yeah, and Pletcher, he's as a freshman, was at 141, went down to 133 for a while uh, where he was an All-American last year. Now back up at 141 pounds. It really looks as good as ever. Pletcher will get the escape, makes it 3-0 in favor of the senior for the Buckeyes. And again, when you talk about these next two weights, you have number one, Luke Pletcher, and the number two, Sammy Sasso, up next for the Buckeyes. For Nebraska, more about surviving these two guys and hopefully maybe getting upset in there. You never know. Again, Red is, you know, very tough, but um, he's fallen back behind a little bit, 4-0, um, stall point in the escape. So four to nothing, Pletcher leads. One minute. One minute Under a minute to go here in the second period. Again, earlier this year, at the Cliff Keen invite, Pletcher major decision to red 11 to three. As Pletcher continues to push the action, is he's got a almost a cradle locked up there, but gets the takedown instead at 6 nothing. Not a great shot attempt from Red. Um, obviously, he sort of has to keep the action going. He's already given up that stall point, so um, you know he has to be shooting uh, with Red pushing him, trying to push him out of bounds a little bit still, and just you know not not a not a high quality shot. And Luke Pletcher took advantage of that. Ten seconds to go. As Pletcher continues to add up the riding time, it's up to 45 seconds. And we end the second period with Luke Pletcher, number one in the country, leading Chad Red Jr. six to nothing. And you see, man, he went quick again on that head, front headlock position to the leg. Almost looked like he could have locked up a cradle there, but uh, relatively easy too for Luke Pletcher. Chad Red three and five against ranked opponents this year. Escape. Certainly had his fair share as he gets the escape, makes it six to one. The Pletcher has certainly proved he can get the offense rolling on his feet in neutral position. He picks an ankle there, almost gets a takedown, but Red avoids the danger. Nice little head heel by Pletcher. Uh, looked like he probably could have you know, dropped down to a single, but uh, Pluck, or Chad Red did a good job getting out of that. 30 seconds into the third period. And at this point, you're Tom Ryan in Ohio State. You're telling Pletcher here you want a bonus point win. You, they're definitely thinking about bonus points right now. Um, a takedown and 10 seconds more riding time, and he has it. So, um, you know, we'll see if Chad Red can kind of get something going offensively. Um, 
Pletcher's had him a little bit off balance here. And we have another stall point on red. Second of the match makes it seven to one now. Second time almost in the same spot on the mat where we've seen Luke Pletcher sort of push Chad Red off and, and get a stall warning and point now. Um, and another iffy shot attempt by Chad Red and Luke Pletcher before you blink, he can spin around, spin around and get two. Takedown for Pletcher makes it nine to one. Riding time over a minute now. So right now, it would be a major decision for Pletcher. Thirty seconds remaining. And the riding time will be locked up here, so at least ten points for Pletcher, so he could give up the escape and still capture the major mm -hmm. decision. Uh, really great job by Pletcher, just setting the tone from start to finish. Red trying to get on his feet. Pletcher not letting that happen. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. And those two stall points uh, for Luke Pletcher to take a 10 to 1 win, they were big. You know, 8, eight to 1 means uh, regular decision, 10 to 1, uh, major decision win for Luke Pletcher, and, and just a great match by Luke Pletcher there. As Pletcher, number one ranked wrestler in the country, gets the 10 to 1 win over Chad Red Jr., and makes this duel 11 to 10, still in favor of Nebraska, but they make it closer as we move on to 149 pounds. It's going to be Sammy Sasso, number two in the country for Ohio State. And it's Colin Puritan for Nebraska, ranked number 15. Sasso really bit, just tons of momentum right now. Beat the number one and number four ranked guys back-to-back. Uh, -back. Um, you know, probably has a pretty strong argument to be the number one ranked guy in the country. There's a few up there that really do it, 149. But, man, he's been really sharp, especially lately. Beat number one, Pat Lugo of Iowa in overtime 2-1, to one, and then had a 4-2 decision win against number four, Brayton Lee of Minnesota in back-to-back -back duels. And that win over Lee, he actually avenged one of his two losses on the year, too. Sasso 19-2 on the year, Purinton 12-5. Sasso, uh, one of the top recruits in the nation two years ago, was a top five recruit, according to Flo, was a Fargo freestyle national champion from Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Well, for Purianton, a senior for Nebraska from Banks, Oregon. And no stranger to upsets, mm -hmm. Purianton. He beat number three at the time, Max Thompson from Northern Iowa. 9-7 to seven in sudden victory overtime. Certainly capable of pulling off the up upset. He's got the home crowd advantage. Minute into the match here, no score. And a highlight, I think, for Colin Purianson was his first pin of the year against Ohio State when he pinned Jared for clearing to put Nebraska ahead going into intermission. And quite an exciting moment there if you're able to watch or see the Nebraska-Penn State duel. Raised stage, home crowd gets the fall over a returning uh, cadet world or a cadet world medalist in for clearing at the time, and we're in a little oh, scramble. scramble situation. Looks they like haven't awarded two yet. Looks like Purinton was close two. to a takedown of Sasso, but the redshirt freshman for Ohio State gets the two points and the lead, two to nothing, with a minute twenty to go in this opening period. Yeah, nice job by Sasso there. It kind of looked like Pierrot had a chance to come out the back, but he got the leg in, uh, stayed underneath the arms, and got his two. Escape, Escape for Pierrot makes it two to one. A minute to go here. See, either guy not waiting for things to happen. Both going at it as Sasso close to another takedown. And he is going to get it, four to one, in favor of the Buckeyes. Sasso, great stuff from Sasso there. He looks sharp right now. We'll see if he tries to ride out the period here. We're about 30 seconds to go. 
he could get close to, you know, could get over a minute of riding time here if he's able to stay on top here and to end the period. Riding time now up to 50 seconds. Four to one, Sasso leads. Under 10 seconds to go. And we end the first period with Sasso leading four to one. Riding time, time up to a minute and nine seconds. Here's that just quick, easy spin around behind. Uh, taking advantage of maybe another iffy shot um, this time from Purinton. We saw a couple so-so shots from Chad Red. Uh, you know, at this level, with this level of guy, you, you just can't do that. Purinton will start on top to begin things here in the second period. Sasso gets the escape, makes it five to one. Nice double leg from Purinton. Purinton went for a double leg, but hangs on just for, Sasso almost got out of it, but Purinton hangs on to the right leg of Sasso. Riding time up to a minute and four seconds for Purinton. Or excuse me, check that, Sasso. Maybe looking at a stalemate called here unless Purinton can improve his position. And there it is, there's a the stalemate. Looked like Purinton was gonna get it. A double leg for a takedown, but Sasso sprawls out. Get to stalemate call. And that was a good shot from Purinton. Getting to a double, switching down to a single. He's just got to work through it and maybe finish next time. Minute into the second period. Five to one, Sasso still leads. Purinton, Purinton on the single. Has it leg locked up. And both are going to go out of bounds. We'll reset. You can see Purinton, who didn't have much success offensively in the first period, starting to get things rolling here. He's been in pretty deep two times in a row now. Just needs to finish to get two. Forty-five seconds. Purinton. See Mark Manning telling Purinton to pick it up. A real long wrestler. Purinton is relatively tall for the weight, long arms. Um, he's probably able to cover some territory there, get in on the leg. Twenty-five seconds. Still five to one. Purinton trying. Go for a leg there on Sasso, nothing going. Under 10 seconds to go. And there it is. End of the second period, five to one. Sammy Sasso leads, Colin Purinton. Not a bad period from Purinton there. He got in deep a couple times, but uh, if he's gonna wanna get back in this match, he's going to need to finish those shots. Sasso, Pretty tough on top. We'll see if he wants to ride here or maybe let Parenton up. Caution there to start things off here in this third period. Riding time up to a minute and nine seconds. For Sasso, but Purinton gets the escape, makes it five to two. Purinton to try for the double leg. There's two Continues. for Purinton. And there's the takedown for Purinton, makes it five four. And he will look to erase the minute and nine seconds of riding time collected by Sasso. 30 seconds in, riding time now under a minute. So that bonus point a race for Sasso for now. Both go out of bounds. They will reset with Sasso on bottom, Purinton on top, the senior. You can wrestling Sasso tough here. You can sort of feel a little change in the tide a little bit. The crowd's starting to get into this match. Uh, six to four, no riding time. Takedown from Purinton to tie this thing up. Purinton cut Sasso loose, so it's six to four. A takedown would tie it up. 
a minute to go. One minute to go, six to four in favor of Sasso. Puritan needs a takedown to tie things up. Looking for his chance, looks at the clock for a second, 40 seconds to go. Hooks one leg. The cradle and from now Sasso, cradle he's got a cradle for Sasso. locked up. Trying to avoid getting on his back. Sasso gets Puritan on his back. Got near fall points. Puritan gets back to his stomach. Four near fall for Sammy Sasso. Makes it 12 to four. And now riding time. It's going to be 13 to four in favor of Sasso. Major decision win. Huge sequence, sequence of events there uh, in favor of Sammy Sasso. Big team points for the Buckeyes there. Going up 14 to 11 now, two matches to go. Sasso gets the late near fall points to defeat Purianton 12, 13 to four. And Ohio State going into the last two weights leads Nebraska 14 to 11. And you, you can't fault Purianton for taking that shot there to try and tie the match up. But man, Sasso did an awesome job of locking up that cradle, and man, it was tight. It looked like Parenton was in big trouble. Maybe lucky to get out of there giving up the major and not the fall. And now to 157 pounds for Nebraska. It's going to be Peyton Rahm from Owatonna High School in Minnesota. While for Ohio State, it's going to be Quinn Kinner from Aluka Hill, New Jersey. Kinner hasn't been, hasn't wrestled the most this year. 10 and four on the season. Recently made his Big Ten dual debut on Friday against Maryland. It was able to tech fall Lucas Cordillo 16 to one. And usually in that spot you have Elijah Cleary, but Kinner gets the start today. You've seen Cleary most, most of the year for the Buckeyes and something interesting here is Quinn Kinner has competed at 133 pounds. And now Rob looking to get a Rob. pin right away. Looking to get Kinner on his back. He got a swipe from near fall. And Rob continues to turn him over. It gets back to his stomach, but four near fall points for Peyton Rob. Six to nothing in favor of the redshirt freshman for Nebraska. Boy, that was an excellent job from Peyton Rob. Awfully close to getting the fall. Escape for Kenner. Escape from Kenner makes it six to one. Rob continuing to go to work. And yeah, we have a stalemate call. Both will reset in neutral position. Minute 12 seconds into this one. Six to one, Peyton Rob leads. Great job by Kinner fighting off of his back. A, a fall there for Nebraska gives him a 17-14 lead and criteria. Mm -hmm. So they would have had to, Ohio State would have had to win the next one by major decision to win the duel. Shot in deep there by Kinner. Sprawl by Rob. And Zao's going to look to rotate around and get a couple of points for Nebraska. Minute to go here in this opening period. And I'll say it again, it's not very often where you see a guy that's wrestled 133 pounds this season up not one, two, but three weights now at 157 pounds for Ohio State. Stalemate called. So both reset, 45 seconds to go. Rob continues to be aggressive here, pushing the action. 
30 seconds left in this opening period. Things have slowed down a little bit here after that exciting throw to start the match. Kinner was a top 20 recruit two years ago. According to Flow Wrestling, was a top 40 recruit to Intermat, so certainly has some hype around him. Well, Peyton Robb taking over to the three-time All-American Tyler Berger, who's sitting in a chair in front of the Nebraska bench. Coaching Robb. End of the first period, 6-1. to one. Rob leads as he decides to go on bottom. And there's the throw from Rob. Sort of a little hip toss there. Did a good job trying to secure the fall, but again, you know, nice job from Kenner even fighting off his back there because that would have been just monumental for the Huskers to get the fall. So Kenner goes to work on top. He's got those His legs in. Leg riding the upper half of Rob's body. You saw that a lot a week ago for Michigan State. Kinner doing the same thing. Maybe they watched that duel and, and, and maybe even had Kinner maybe go to the legs. And maybe that's why they put him out here instead of Cleary. Perhaps he's pretty tough on top. Rob looks to get the reversal and does. Eight to one, Rob leads. Good job swimming through, coming out the back there from Peyton Rob to get that reversal. Rob certainly has caught the attention of some of the top wrestlers in the world as the wrestling partner for James Green. This past year, training for the World Championships. Last year in 2019, as Kinner gets the escape, makes it eight to two. Right now, riding time not a factor, 15 seconds in favor of Rob. And going back to James Green for Nebraska and Tyler Berger succeeding him. Both of those guys multiple-time All-Americans. Berger was a finalist his senior year. And uh, Peyton Robb's going to look to kind of take the mantle for the Huskers at 157. Uh, you know, certainly great recruit out of high school. And he's doing a great job this year for Nebraska. Robb finished seventh at the Cliff Keen invite earlier this year. Well, for Kinder, dating back to the Purple Raider Open where he competed at, He's currently on a five-match win streak. Right now, that's in danger as he trails Rob 8-2 to two with 25 seconds left in this second period. And Kinner could realistically be the replacement next year for Pletcher. Um, you know, based on the fact he's been at 133 this season, you got to think maybe that cut, weight cut might have been a little tough, and, and maybe we'll just see him at 141 next year for the Buckeyes. And there goes the buzzer as we go to the third period with Peyton Robb leading Quinn Kinner 8-2. And it'll be Kinner who will go on bottom. Again, 14-11 Ohio State leads. The decision would tie things up and send this duel into the final match of the day. Come down to that. Rob looking to squeeze tight the cradle. He's got it locked up. Kinner gets out of it. It's an escape for the Buckeye. Makes it 8-3. to three. Shot there by Kinner. Nice sprawl by Rob, and there's a stalemate called. We'll reset in the center, both in neutral position. Good, sturdy defense there from Peyton Rob. Kept his hips squared. Kinner really never got close to finishing that shot. Minute 20 to go. If you're Peyton Robb, are you thinking about maybe getting the major decision here, or are you are you just happy getting your team a chance to to get for go for the win in the final match? And most likely, this isn't going through his mind. I think he's just focused on getting the win here because if you're Coach Mark Manning, you are just fine. No risk, no nothing. Get the win and leave it up to Isaiah White, one of the top five ranked guy in the country, for you at 165 to end the match, end the duel. 
Obviously for Peyton Robb, just trying to focus on getting the win. Another stalemate called, 41.6 seconds to go. Eight to three, Robb leads. Largely on the strength of that big throw we saw in the first period. Jumped out to a six to zero lead. Um, only three escapes for Kenner so far. Uh, really hasn't been too close to scoring offensively. And it's in all likelihood, barring anything crazy here, is probably going to come down to our last match. Another stalemate call. They're going to reset once again. No riding time. Bonus point will be awarded to either wrestler. 20 seconds to go. Ten seconds. And Rob will ride out the remaining time. A six-point first period leads the way for Rob to get the 8-3 win and tie this duel up at 14 points apiece, and it will be decided at 165. Sweet throw by Rob. Good job just kind of staying sturdy. Good defense the rest of that match. 8-3 winner. Honestly, wouldn't have mattered if he got a major anyways. Whoever wins this one's going to win the duel. And it all comes down to this. Second time in the last three duels, it's come down to the final match for Nebraska. That was the case for Penn State a few weeks ago, where Christian Lance lost to Seth Nevels. And Penn State won that duel 20 to 18, and it once again comes down to this one. But instead, it's at 165, where one of the leaders of this Nebraska team, Isaiah White, will take on Ethan Smith of Ohio State to end this duel. And now you know why they picked 174 to start. Yeah. <laughs> we got a tie duel down to the last match. You can't really get it better than this. Isaiah White ranked number four in the country. Ethan Smith ranked number 13. White four and three in duels, has not won a Big Ten duel match this year. While Smith six and five in duels, four and two in the Big Ten. Smith four and seven, faced 11 ranked wrestlers. He is four and seven of those. While White is four and three against ranked opponents. Probably his highlight win this year was a win over then number five, Josh Shields of Arizona State, 7-1 to one at the Cliff Keaton Invite, which White won. Same as the Nebraska team. And Smith was a national qualifier last year, up away at 174. Minute in, nothing going for each wrestler here. And you just get the sense this is a type of match that Isaiah White wants. He wants to be that guy to decide this duel. He wants that pressure. Sure, you know, I mean, if, if there's probably a couple guys on Nebraska's team they'd like to have out there at the end, and White would be right at the top of that list. Looking for a takedown near the edge of the mat. Nothing called. There's the two points. Right at the edge of the mat, White takes the lead for Nebraska. The challenge brick was thrown, but... Oh, the whole coaching staff in Nebraska is like, no, 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 I no, want we'll it back. it back. We'll take it back. <laughs> They're going to take a look at it anyway. They were challenging a no call of a takedown, but the referees later called it. You see it here right near the edge of the mat, and Not White had the there. awareness to stick his left leg out just inside the white line, gets the takedown. Yeah, White did a great job keeping his one supporting point on the mat to secure the takedown. Uh, Nebraska threw the brick because he didn't get the two to begin with. Got it anyways. You won't see any change in the score, and here we are. White's ahead 2-0. to zero. Minute 32 to go, opening period. White will be on top here right after his takedown. And Smith almost tried to roll things through. But White with the authoritative Matt return. Yeah. 
Both go out of bounds. They're going to reset with a minute six to go. White's originally from Oak Park in Chicago. Uh, wrestled at Notre Dame College, which is in Ohio. Uh, was a D2 NCAA Division II national champion. And you, you got to think that Ohio State probably wanted to get Isaiah White to stay in Ohio and go over there. Um, but he came to Nebraska, where he's an All-American last year. Finished sixth last year to clinch All-American honors, fifth at the Big Ten Championships. And quite a schedule he had a year ago. 21 of his 34 matches were against ranked opponents. We did not see White for Nebraska last week. He was out of that duel. Uh, prior to that, three ranked losses in the top five in a row. One of those by just a point where he had the lead on, at the time, number one, Marinelli from Iowa. And off a whistle, White goes down to the ground and is slow to get up. Not a good scene if you're Nebraska. This is quite after the whistle blew. He fell to the ground, and again, it looks like they're looking at his ankle. Something that was questionable going into today. We take a look at what happened. Oh boy, you can see that left foot stick in the mat a little bit. And again, talking to Coach Mark Manning after last week's win against Michigan State, he mentioned that Dalton Peters got the start a week ago because he hurt his ankle against Penn State and the way he talked, it wasn't severe at all. And that's probably why we're seeing White today. Gosh, and, you know, but leading the match 2-0. This, this would be heartbreaking. It, it would be, you know, heartbreaking for the Huskers. And, and surely if you're Ohio State, this really wouldn't be the way you wanted to win yeah. the duel. Uh, so, you know, hopefully Isaiah White's okay, getting his ankle wrapped up right now. But, man. And I think this is the type of situation where you're going to have to drag White off if they want an injury to fall here. Just look at him. He does look in pain with that ankle. Mark Manning talking it over with his senior. It looks like he's going to try to continue. Gosh, and it was quiet in yeah. here when White went down. You could almost hear a pin drop. These, these fans know the situation. White will be on top, and you wonder what the strategy will change if you're Ethan Smith, especially when they get up in neutral. Uh, White's done a great job here so far riding on top, and he gives up the quick escape. He built up a minute and 17 seconds of riding time. Ten seconds. And that will end the first period. White hangs on for a 2-1 lead as again... Slow to get up, favoring that left ankle of his as the fans cheer him on to continue here. Minute 17 of riding time for White as he leads it 2-1 to one over Smith. You can almost see it in his face when he gets up, He's definitely in pain. He's going to let Smith up, ties it at two. White just hanging around the edge of the mat. As both go off, we'll reset. And you could tell even near the edge of the mat there that he did not look he wanted to move. No. As Ohio State bench wanted to stall as well. Riding time in a minute 31. White has that bonus point. But he's got to be careful. You know, and if you're if you're Smith here, you smell blood a little bit. The other guy's hurt. Um, you know, he's going to keep the pressure coming on Isaiah White. And, and uh, you know, White's going to have to dig deep here if he's going to want to stay in this one. White initially went for a shot. As White continues to drive and looks for two yeah, points. Sure. Trying to keep that foot in, but he couldn't quite finish it. Still tied at two, 56 seconds to go. 
It's a war of attrition now for Isaiah White. The senior from Chicago, Illinois. 50 seconds to go. Looking for a takedown near the edge of the mat for Smith. Nothing going there. White gets out of it. Good defense there from yep. White. Good defense. 35 seconds to go, second period. Right of time still at a minute 31. We've seen a few situations on the edge now. Uh, that one there where they wanted Ohio State wanted a stalling call. Yeah, you and just saw White just completely just walk by, just walk away as Smith. And even prior to that, when Ohio, when White went out of bounds with trying to keep his foot in, Nebraska wanted a stall call on yeah. the edge. So is White? Ooh, Ooh, wow! Tries to throw Smith to his back, but they go out of bounds. 14 seconds to go. The crowd gets louder and louder here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Under 10 seconds left, second period. Shot in by Smith. Sprawl by White. That's going to end the second period, nope. and they give him the two-point takedown that is close. right at the end. That was close, and they gave him two. You can see the clock in the background a little bit there. They're going to look at it. And you can see White huddled over. As they're going to take another look. See if this is a takedown. Of course, this is huge. This is huge. Sh short time left in the period there. You can see the clock back behind them. Time's out there, and so it doesn't look like two, actually. Again, the referees have been challenged tonight in terms of uh, looking at some. We have. We've seen a call changed. We've seen some calls stand. They're going to give them the two. Interesting. It, you can see the clock in the background. It looked like it went down to zeros, but they're going to give the takedown to Smith. Very close either way, and White will start the third period on bottom, trailing now four to two. Riding time, bonus point, still in favor of White. Stalling. And they go out of bounds once again. They'll reset. Riding time at a minute 23 for White. And escape would tie it. If, of course, he still has that riding time bonus point. It'll be huge for White to get out here within the next 23 seconds to maintain that point and effectively tie it, uh, making the match come down to one final takedown. But if he's unable to get out, a reversal would take the, the lead. One. There's the one point escape. This match is tied. Riding time bonus point still in the favor of White. Minute 30 to go. White working hard on that head. Sort of a modified front headlock a little bit. We have a stalemate. Both will be on their feet. And this is where you see what these two are made of. Minute 15 to go. You hear the Go Big Red chant going on from the Husker faithful. Cheering on their guy, Isaiah White, battling through an ankle injury here. Under a minute to go. 50 seconds. No stall warnings in this match, which is notable. Probably won't come down to any sort of point other than a takedown. Stall warning on red. Looking for two as they go out of bounds. It will reset with 32 seconds to go. White called for a stall. Something to watch out for here. 30 seconds to go. Almost right after I said no one's been warned for stalling, he got warned for stalling. Ohio State wanted two on the edge, but he wasn't underneath both arms. White's got to be careful. He does. He does. 25 seconds. White looking to attack. 
Both go off the mat again. 22.2 seconds to go. What a match to end this duel. Team score is tied. The match is now tied officially with the riding time point locked up for Isaiah White. Under 10 seconds. White, look at the attack! Looking for two, he got it! Oh my goodness, wow. it's a pin! What it's a, a pin! For Isaiah White to end the duel. Wow! Nebraska and the wins! is going crazy. What a finish for Isaiah White. What a warrior out there. Incredible job battling through injury. <laughs> what an exciting finish. My wow. goodness. And he is pumped up. The Nebraska bench is pumped up. Ohio State came to battle. Nebraska with the with the with the upset. 20 to 14 for the Huskers. Nebraska finally gets a ranked dual win, and it comes against number three Ohio State. It took to the final match, but Isaiah White, through an ankle injury, gets the win and delivers Nebraska a top five dual win, their first of the year. Man, the this duel was crazy, almost from start to finish. Exciting first match with Labriola. Sasso getting the major decision at the last second. Pletcher and Chad Red. You, you almost can't even write this no. finish. Uh, Isaiah White fighting through the injury to get the fall to end it. Nebraska wins it 20 to 14. Your final here from Lincoln.